Hello everybody, my name is Abuna Isaac Greer from Barry Shiny Lab, and today we're going to be looking at Algebra 2, specifically quadratics. So I know I may be starting this a little late, especially because we only have 17 days before the Algebra 2 Regents begins, but uh, I mean, hey, better late than never, right? So anyway, first of all, what we're going to do with quadratics is dividing quadratics, alright? So, Let's say we have 2x plus 1. This is a little thick. Might want to change the thickness. So, let me change it to that. All right. So, today, first we're going to start by dividing quadratics or dividing with trinomials. So, if we have 2x plus 1, let's say we have 6x squared plus 13x plus 8. So now, how do we divide one by another? It's not like regular long division, which let's review. So for example, if you have 65 and 3, then obviously 3 goes into 6 two times. So we put a 2 up here. So that gives us 0. We bring the 5 down. And then uh, 3 goes into 5 once, so you put a 1 up there, subtract 3, so you have 21 and a remainder of 2. And you can test this out by doing <coughs> dividend is equal to divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So that would mean that 65 is equal to a uh, divisor times quotient plus remainder. Oh. So what about here? Well, we can't, like, just say, hmm, 2x plus 1 goes into 6x squared plus 13x. Well, we can't divide by binomials. This could be easier if we had a monomial, but we don't have a monomial, unfortunately. We have to learn how to do this with binomials. And I say, we can do this by simply not giving a crap about the second term. So, let's say we have the first term, which is 2x. All we need to do is take the first term of this, then divide the two by each other. So that would give us 3x. So now multiply the entire thing by 3x, then obviously subtract it. So multiplying the whole thing by 3x would give us, well, 6x squared plus 3x. Or since we're distributing a negative, that would make this minus 3x. So we're essentially reviewing basic concepts in Algebra 1 for this. So 6x squared minus 6x squared cancels out. 13x minus 3x is 10x. Then we bring the 8 downwards. So this is plus 8. And now what is 10? Oh wait, I have to uh, since 6x squared minus 3x is 2x plus 1 times 3x, then I'm going to put a 3x up top. What about 10x plus 8? <coughs> well, when we take 10x plus 8, so we take 10x and then divide it by 2x. 10x is the first term. So that gives us 5, so we multiply the whole thing by 5. Of course, we have to subtract it too. So, negative 5 times that, so since we're multiplying by 5, let's add that over there. So, 5 times that, 10, negative 10x, and then negative minus 5, so this is going to be a negative because we distributed, so that's going to be a canceling out and that gives us 
that 2x uh, plus 1 times 3x plus 5 plus 3 has got to be equal to 6x squared plus 13x plus 8. So, let's see. Is it really? Well, this is our dividend. I always keep forgetting if it's dividend or dividend. Then we have divisor times quotient plus remainder. So our divisor, uh, so that would be 2x plus 1. And our quotient, 3x plus 5, plus our remainder, 3, should give us 6x squared plus 10x. So 6x squared plus 10x plus 3x plus 5 plus 3. And when we add up all of the like terms, we get uh, not plus 5 plus 8 because of this 3 which is exactly what we had before. Just like in our original example with 3 and 65, so if I go and do that again, so this is 21, so D equals D times Q plus R, then you take the dividend, the, the divisor, 3, times the quotient, 21, add the remainder, well, 3 plus, uh, times 21 is 63, plus 2 is 65, so that's just something handy you can use to check out your division. So now, next, we're going to be looking at the three ways to factor a quadratic. And then, finally, we're going to be looking at how to graph one. So we're going to be looking at three ways. So first of all, regular. Second of all, I'm not going to reveal to you the full name, but COS. And the third is going to be the QF. So what are, what's the regular way of factoring? Well, let's say we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So, x squared plus 2x plus 1, you may see it equals 0 there, but we're going to get to that later. So, x squared plus 2x plus 1, how do we factor? Well, what we need to do when factoring is, the <coughs> all quadratics come in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So, what we need to do is we need to find two numbers that I'll call m and n. And m times n must be equal to a times c. a will commonly be 1, so sometimes you can just focus on c. And m plus n must be equal to b. So in this case, can you think of two numbers that uh, multiply to 1 and add to 2? Well, I'll tell you, 1 and 1. Didn't think that was coming, did you? Unless you already know this stuff. Or you recognize this from a sneaky little formula. So, x, x plus 1, plus 1, x plus 1. How do I do that? Well, let's split this into two sections, x squared plus x and x plus 1. So, I ignore this plus sign for a moment. So, what does, <clears throat> what is the common factor here? What can we factor out? Well, we could factor out an x because it's in both of them. This is x times x, this is x. So, we can factor out x like we're doing over here. What about x plus 1? Well, there's no two terms that are shared in common, so we're just going to factor out 1. Now, realize that these two have the same multiple. So you're trying to factor out the greatest common factor. So we have x plus 1 and we have x plus 1. Since these are equal, we can actually just make this x plus 1 
times x plus 1, which is x plus 1 whole squared. We're going to see what the difference is between that and that later. So, now, what about COS? Well, I'll tell you what that really is. That's called completing the what? The square. So how do we do that? Well, completing the square can do more tasks than regular. So, for example, if we wanted to factor out x squared plus 6x plus 7, what happens if we try and factor it out regularly? Is there anything that multiplies to 6 and adds to 7? Well, let's, let's look at 6's factors. So you can get 6 by multiplying 2 by th 3 or 1 by 6. Mm. Well, <clears throat> 1 times 6 does not uh, equal to 7. Wait, oh no. I'm we're supposed to be looking at the factor of 7, not 6. So 7 is 1 times 7. That's it. So that means that there is no, absolutely no way to factor this regularly. Now, sir, if you had minus 7, you could, could also consider negative 7, which does have mm, 7 times minus 1. But we're not looking for the minus, we're looking for positivity, which is impossible to solve regularly. So what about with completing the square? Well, let's do a handy dandy trick and set the other side to zero. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to find x, alright? So, mm, if we're trying to find x, we can do it simply. This is usually to find the x-intercept, which is when y is 0. So, if you have a function, then you're setting f of x to 0. That's why there's a 0 on the other side. So, first of all, there's going to be that secret formula that I mentioned to you earlier. a plus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Do keep in mind that a minus b squared is simply the same thing but with a minus in front of the 2ab. Mm. So, now, what does that mean? Well, x squared plus 6x plus 7 actually looks suspiciously similar to something we can do. What can we do? Well, think about it. This is 2ab. So, a could be x, because we have x squared over here, and we have x in this term over here. So, what would b be if a is x? Well, b would have to be, since we're multiplying by 2, we take 6x divided by 2x, b has to be 3. But 3 squared should be 9. So, what we have to do to complete the square is to add 2 to both sides so that it becomes 9. So now, this is all equal to x plus 3 squared, as it says. However, unless you're on a multiple choice, you will need to show your work for this, sadly, because it's the regions. So now, you square root both sides because you have a whole over here. So you have x plus 3 is equal to plus minus the square root of 2. You should know why there's a plus or minus. I'm not going to explain it to you like a baby. Subtract 3 from both sides. And boom. Now, you have x equal negative 3 plus minus. So it could be negative 3 plus the square root of 2 or negative 3 minus the square root of 2. 